Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chairman of the Holocaust Museum Board and the 2018 Chrysostomos Award recipient, Howard Lorber. It was a pleasure to be here with you again this year. Last year, I had the great privilege of receiving the Chrysostomos Award, named for a man whose unflinching courage in the face of evil stands as an inspiration for all times. Greece represented a special case during the Holocaust for several reasons. First, the Jews in Greece were among the longest continuous presence of Jews in any European country. Second, there was significant local resistance against the Nazis. In spite of the widespread Nazi propaganda that portrayed the Jews as dangerous aliens, most people in Greece saw their Jewish compatriots as simply as Greeks. This was the message of Metropolitan Chrysostomos to Nazi authorities who demanded that he identify the Jews on Zakynthos. And this is why the people of Zakynthos risked their own lives to take in their Jewish neighbors and hide them for months. And fortunately, the example of Zakynthos is not unique. Thousands of Greek Jews escaped the Holocaust thanks to the help of their fellow Greeks. In Athens, the Greek Orthodox Church under Archbishop Damaskinos provided fake baptismal certificates to Jews and hid them in the monasteries, convents, and orphanages. The Athens police provided false identity documents to Jews and helped them rescue Jewish children. The Greek resistance movements provided refuge to Jews in the mountains, guided many to safety in Turkey, and took at least 650 into their ranks. Tonight, we gather to recognize another part of the history that took place not in Greece, but in German-occupied Poland. 75 years ago this month, on October 7, 1944, a group of several hundred Greek Jews helped lead a daring prisoner revolt, the first and only armed uprising at Auschwitz-Birkenau. This remarkable rebellion was spearheaded by the Sonderkommandos, which were special units comprised of Jewish prisoners whose horrific task it was to dispose of the victims' bodies in the crematory. Because of their intimate knowledge of the killing process, the Sonderkommandos were routinely murdered every four or five months and replaced with fresh arrivals. Their uprising was planned months in advance as Jewish female prisoners repeatedly smuggled explosives from the munitions factory where they worked as forced laborers. With those explosives, Sonder Commando's members courageously demolished one crematorium and the uprising spread across the camp. The Germans brutally and swiftly crushed the rebellion. Some 451 Sonder Commando members were killed. And yet, Despite the resistance in Greece and by Greek Jews at Auschwitz, nothing stopped the German onslaught. The Germans destroyed Jewish libraries, synagogues, places of culture, and of course, people all across Europe. By the end of the war, almost 90% of Greek Jews had been killed. This ancient Jewish community, centuries old, was essentially destroyed in just about two years. What a tragic history. But for me, it's more than a history. It is a family. My Greek grandparents were fortunate to leave in time and get to the US way before the war started. Luckily, I grew up eating wonderful Greek food and hearing stories about the family. But those stories included the terrible fate of Greek Jews during the war. In fact, my, grandfather, my grandmother felt that my grandfather died so young because he never got over the loss of his entire family and all his friends during the Holocaust. The fate of the Jews of Greece is what has brought me here today. It has taught me the power of hate when left unchecked to unleash unspeakable horror and destruction. And it has taught me the power of ordinary citizens to confront the forces of hate. The actions of Metropolitan Chrysostomos Many Greek citizens and the Greek Jewish resistance fighters at Auschwitz remind us of the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum's motto and something we should never forget, what you do matters.
Please watch this video with me, which pays tribute to the courage of the Greek Jews at Auschwitz. Thank you. In a world where there are lots of awards and lots of honors, this one is really special because the story it tells and the man who bears the award name is someone quite unique in history. We need such stories of inspiration and courage today as much as ever. On March 15, 1943, the first train departed Thessaloniki, Greece, destined for Auschwitz concentration camp in Poland. On board, the Nazi occupiers crammed into cattle cars over a hundred Jewish fathers, mothers, sons and daughters who would soon be joined by some 46,000 more from Thessaloniki alone to become the over 1 million prisoners never to leave Auschwitz. Only 4% of the town's population would survive the Nazi death camps. They put them on the train and they took them to Auschwitz. Once they got in the concentration camp, they took the two girls separately than their parents. Another story she told me was that she was in a room held up by an SS or many SS, and I remember her saying if she would move, she would be shot. And she was part of the group that were cleaning the ashes from the crematories. She says, I didn't know, I, we were, they were taking us there in the ovens and we had to clean the ovens. And she says, when I thought later on that those probably were my parents' ashes, that's when she realized what she was doing. The Sonderkommando, or special labor squad, were young male Jews who were kept separate from the rest of the camp and given the horrific task of disposing of their brethren's bodies in the crematorium. After several months of work, the entire group of Sonder Commando would be exterminated, and a new group would dispose of their bodies and resume their grisly task. On October 7, 1944, the Germans were attempting to round up a group of 200 Greek and Hungarian Jews, calling them by name to report to what they surely knew was their demise. These brave men stood together while no one responded to their names being called. Then suddenly, a voice shouted out in Greek, we will make our attack or not. And the unarmed prisoners rushed to the German guards, armed themselves, and took positions inside the crematorium as they rallied others to join in their revolt. The 75th anniversary year of that revolt, in fact, to the month, October 1944, October 2019, it's not a story that's well enough known. But even to the extent that it is known, I don't think many people can understand the conditions in Auschwitz and therefore how remarkable this act of courage was. Yes, it was an act of desperation. Yes, the people surely knew that they wouldn't survive, but they at least wanted to show their courage, their bravery, their dignity in the face of the most evil atrocities committed by humankind ever. I think the fact that you've chosen to honor these Greek Jews posthumously is really quite extraordinary. May the blessing of their lives, these several hundred Greek Jews, be everlasting. And may we always find inspiration from the courage they showed, a courage which was needed then in 1944, a courage which is always needed if the forces of good are going to prevail over the forces of evil. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to accept the 2019 Metropolitan Chrysostomos Award. Congressional Medal of Honor recipient, Colonel Jack Jacobs. Provided me with a small raise. Evgaristo. Uh, my father's family came to Greece as uh, Roman slaves from Judea, 
And by the beginning of the 21st century, they'd been in Greece for about 1,500 years. These were tough mountain people who learned to survive because they learned to take care of each other. They brought that sense of community to America about a century ago and taught it to me, and I taught it to my children and my grandchildren. It's uh, always in the most difficult of circumstances that we're tested to see if we can fulfill our responsibilities to each other. On my battlefield about 51 years ago, and at Auschwitz and at countless other places, there has been always so much bravery among so many people. But all of us and all of them were driven by the same sense of community that Greeks have always felt. I accept this award for all those who can't, brave men and women who You know, those of us who've been uh, recognized for our bravery, recognize that we wear the award, we wear the accolade, not for us, but for all those who can't, uh, who tried to do the right thing for each other and perished in the process. All these people knew intuitively, and we have to remember this as Americans, they knew intuitively the spirit of Brent, Ben Franklin's guidance. And we have to remember this. We must hang together or we will surely hang separately. Thank you.